Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some standard cards that have been rising in price and whether or not they are good future speculations. I will start with Nissa. I do like her a lot. I do feel like $6 is good and the color pattern, green, blue. That's not bad. That's being played. That's currently in the meta. So I was telling you not to buy Nissa because it's hard for me to imagine a, a deck that would really want her. There currently is a deck that wants her and it is green blue. So very strong planeswalker, very flexible in terms of what it can do. And now the colors are correct. I mean, the it might see a more play. It's not perfect for that deck, but it is in meta. I expect her ceiling to be $10, $15, but her floor, she pretty much is a win-win at this point in time. Okay, next one, Angel of Invention. This card recently spiked up past 10. It's dropped off some to $5.90. It is in Kaladaz. It has a lot of utility, uh, a lot of utility on it. Great for creature token decks, great for just overall, it's a lot of value that's difficult to remove all the bodies at once should you fabricate. Now the lifelink is incredibly valuable in the current standard. And overall, I think it has a, it has the potential to be quite expensive in the future. Lots of abilities, lots of flexibility, and even the other creatures you get plus one plus one, that's very good. So maybe it finds a home, maybe it doesn't. It's worth a shot in the dark. And as a mythic angel, those things tend not to go too low even after rotation. Okay, let's talk about the most expensive land in standard, or one of the most expensive land in standard. It is Botanical Sanctum, which is the green blue, fast land. Why is this land the most expensive? Because it's on color. And that's why I feel very confident, confident about Nyssa. Everything is telling me that Nyssa can be played. The question is, will she be played? And the answer for that one might be no. However, it might be yes. But regardless, Botanical Garden has spiked like crazy. It's kind of like a lottery when it happens in the beginning. You don't know what the meta looks like. So you, the color patterns or the land that goes up most in price will be the one with the, the best decks, right? So great land. All the fast lands are worth picking up should they rotate out. I mean, the fast lands see plenty of play in modern. Not plenty of play, but more play than zero. So I like the fast lands as a long-term speculation. Botanical Sanctum is the best fast land right now. All right, anointed. Remember when I said anointed was $5 and it was a really good deal? Well, it's 10 plus dollars now. Am I surprised? No. Will it go down after the rotation? Yes. It's just one of those cards that doubles and creature tokens being very good. You play this one and then you play your angel of invention. You get just so many creature tokens and they're all relatively big creatures because the angel, well, they're actually all two twos. You get lots of bodies. Uh, it's also very good for zombies. It's great for EDH. $10 feels like a lot, but I mean, when you look at doubling season, you look at par parallel lives, you look at anything else that really doubles, it's not bad. Like it's actually very, very decent um, as a $10 card. Now, would I buy this at 10? No, I told you to buy a five and you should have bought it at five. Uh, it was at five for a long period of time. You could have bought and traded at five. Yes, it's seeing more standard play, but I think eternally it's one of the only things in standard that will hold after rotation all right treasure map this one is very very good i underestimated it and it has gone back to or it has 
it's at all time high and that includes pre-order prices at around five or four dollars it is now around five dollars it's just overall very powerful effects um this type of mechanic it's really hard to gauge the mechanic but having having card draw is very good uh sacrificing treasures when it flips so i've actually played this card when it flips uh during pre-release and i wasn't like overwhelmed with it but you can sack treasures to draw cards and that is great advantage in control decks uh, so it was pretty good i mean it wasn't bad at pre-release it was just that like when your your card drawing is when the cards in your library are not very good because i didn't draw any bombs I didn't have any bombs in my sealed pool, then yeah, card drawing is less significant. All right, let's talk about the main winner, or at least the fact that she's not a loser. Vraska, a six mana planeswalker. Mm. So this one is has been going up in price and it has held $20. Very difficult for a planeswalker to hold $20 nowadays just given how many, how much supply it is. However, the pirate decks, I mean, the pirate decks are, seem to be really fun. I was playing my opponent uh, last Friday night or this Friday night, and they had a pirate deck, and it just seemed like a blast. They had a ton of fun. I had a lot of fun playing it. And overall, I think oh, it's a great, great Planeswalker. Six is a lot, but it does win you the game. It does dominate the game, and something where... I really wanted Vraska, the original Vraska, to see play the Unseen or whatever her name was. And it's good to see that this one has seen play. I, I like Vraska as a character, and I'm glad to see her return. And I'm glad to see that she has MTG Finance significance as well. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.